dear students welcome in the class of english literature i am dr sumer singh assistant professor department of english government lohia college churu today in the class of english literature paper first poetry and drama we will study lord alfred tennyson's poem tears idle tears so today in this class of ba second year english literature paper first dear students we will study lord alfred tennyson's poem tear idle tears as we know that lord alfred tennyson is one of the most important poets of english literature and he is regarded as the representative of victorian age victorian age is marked with the note of pessimism depression disappointment so being as the representative poet of victorian age there is a uh, pessimism there is a spirit of disappointment there is a note of depression into the poetry of tennyson also the poem tears idle tears the title of the poem also indicates that it is about the seriousness it is about the sorrow or we can say seriousness because the title tears tears means the tears which come into our eyes have always a cause have always a reason behind them because without any cause without any reason without any meaning tears don't get flow into our eyes they don't come into our eyes it means if there are the tears then the meaning is always there the reason is always there the poet wants to say in this poem that there are the tears into my eyes there is a flow of tears into my eyes but i am not able to know the real cause i am not able to discern the real reason of these tears that why these tears have come into my eyes therefore without meaning without reason the tears are into our eyes it means they are called idle tears so the poet uh, the poet have given the title of this poem tears idle tears it means tears are there into my into my eyes but they are the idle tears because uh, the poet is not able to know the exact cause know the exact significance and meaning of these tears therefore these tears are entitled as the idle tears because the meaning is not clear the meaning is not uh, we can say uh, known to the poet so students uh, we start the poem as we know that the poem is divided into four parts there are the four stanzas and in four stanzas the poet expresses his feelings expresses his Uh, emotions about these tears that why these tears have come into my eyes and what is the meaning of these tears so he he is going to try uh, he is going to uh, try to know the meaning of these tears that what is the real cause of these tears so let's start the poem and we start the first stanza of the poem tears idle tears i don't know what they mean tears from the depth of some divine despair rise in the heart and gather to the eyes in looking on the happy atman fields and thinking of the days that are no more so the poet says that tears idle tears it means he wants to say that there are the tears into my eyes and these tears are called as the idle tears because the poet is not able to know the exact meaning know the exact cause of these tears that why these tears have come into my eyes i don't know what they mean so the poet says that i don't know what is the meaning of these tears why these tears have come into my eyes i don't know the real meaning of these tears but it is definite that there is a meaning of these tears there is the significance of these tears because without meaning tears don't get a flow into our eyes tears from the depth of some divine despair rise in the heart he wants to explain that tears come out due to the despair due to the sorrow or due to the seriousness that take place into the depth of our heart 
so any kind of sorrow any kind of seriousness that take place into the depth of our heart it creates tears into our eyes so he says that the reason of these tears is the divine despair divine sorrow that has taken place into the depth of my heart and therefore these tears have come into my eyes and gather to eyes in looking on happy ataman fields and thinking of the days that no that are no more so he says that these tears have generated into my eyes when i started to look on the ataman fields because these ataman fields are not out happy fields but uh, it is the ataman season and before the ataman season these fields were full of greenery full of uh, other beauties of nature and he says that i am also thinking about the days that are no more in this world it means the poet is thinking the poet is remembering about those past glorious days of those past happy days that are no more now it means the poet is reminding of those past happy do- happy days those past happy glorious moments that are no more in this world so in this way we can say that these tears have come into the eyes of the poet due to the past memory of the past sweet days due to the memory of the past glorious days due to the memory of the past happy days it means the poet reminds of the past happy days because those days are no more in this world at this time and the poet can't enjoy the happiness of those past days it means he reminds of the past happiness and that brings tears into the eyes of the poet in the next stanza second stanza fresh as the first beam glittering on a sail that brings our friends up from the underworld sad as the last which reddens over one that sinks with all we love below the waves so sad so fresh the days that are no more so the poet compares these tears with the bright rays with the bright beams of the sun that fall on the sail that fall on the ship that is sailing in the ocean and the ship brings our friends to us from the different parts of the world so the poet says that these tears are as fresh as pure as bright as shining as the first beam that falls on the ship that falls on the uh, sail that sail that ship brings our friends from the various corners from the various parts of the world to us so it is a comparison of the freshness and the purity of these tears with the purity of the first beam the first ray of the sun that falls on a ship into the ocean said as the last which reddens over one that sinks with all we love below the waves below the waves means below the surface of the sea it means below the uh, uh, surface of the sea or below the place where earth and ocean meets so he says that these uh, tears are also reminds of those sad memories of those sad sorrows that we express over the drowning of our friends into the ocean so sometimes the friends that doesn't uh, friends that don't come to us and a misfortune happens with them so we express sorrow so these tears are as serious as sorrowful as the sorrow we express uh, uh, over the departure of our nearest dearest one over the departure of our friends so these tears are fresh as well as these tears are sad so both qualities are there because the tears are the result of our sorrow that rise into our heart and then they start to flow into our eyes so they are fresh they are pure but the cause of these tears is sorrow the cause of these tears is unhappiness the cause of these tears is despair and disappointment so they are sad because the nature of these tears is sad and they are pure in their quality so he says that so sad the tears are so sad so sorrowful so fresh they are so pure so fresh the days that are no more 
it means these tears are the uh, tears are the result of the memory of those past days memory of those glorious days which we ha we have enjoyed in our past which we have enjoyed in previous days so in this way these tears are so dearest these tears are so sweet these tears are so loud as the days of the past time which were so sweet so loud to us because we have enjoyed joys happiness into our past days and now we remember the joys and happiness which we have enjoyed in the past days then the tears automatically generates into our eyes the tears automatically appear into our eyes so these tears are the memory these tears are the we can say reminding of all those past days which were the happy days and those happy days are no more in this world it means the joys and the pleasures which we have enjoyed in the past are not available at this time in this world so in this way the poet says that these tears are so sad so fresh as the days that are no more in the next stanza a sad and strange as in a dark summer dawn the earliest pipe of half awakened birds to dying ears when unto dying eyes the casement slowly grows a glimmering square so sad so strange the days that are no more so the line so sad so phrase the days that are no more so the line is repeated after a an fixed interval after a fixed interval it means it is the example of refrain a refrain is one of the most important uh, figure of speech and refrain provides the lyrical quality provides the music to the poem and therefore the poem tears idle tears is a beautiful song it has lyrical quality as we know that tennyson is one of the most important lyrical poets of english literature and in the victorian age he is regarded as the greatest lyrical poet in english literature so lyricism is one of the most important quality or the feature of tennyson's poetry so this line provides the musical quality this line provides the lyrical quality to the poem and the poem becomes very memorable recitable so he says in the third stanza that these tears uh, uh, are as sad and strange as in the dark summer dawn dark summer dawn it means the early morning or the uh, uh, we can say in hindi we can say bhor early morning jaldi subah so these tears are as strange as sad as in the early morning dawn of the summer season when the earliest pipe of half awakened birds sings beautiful song to the dying ears or to the dying eyes it means in the summer season birds sings very beautiful song in the early morning at the time of dawn and we hear the uh, or we listen those beautiful songs of the birds in the early morning then we are also half awakened so our dying ears or our dying eyes it means that for the dying ears it means half awakened ears we hear the beautiful song of the birds that birds are singing in the early morning of the summer season so these uh, tears are as sad and strange as the beautiful song of the birds sung at the time of early morning in the summer season and these tears uh, are uh, as beautiful or we can say as attractive as the uh, scene of, uh, of the early morning which we enjoy by opening our window the word casement is casement is used in this poem it means in the early morning we open our window and we enjoy the beautiful scene and sight of the nature or we also enjoy the fresh air of the nature in the early morning so he says that when unto the dying eyes the casement slowly grows a glimmering square so the our window is full of darkness in the during the night and when there is the early morning through the window oh, uh, we see the beautiful scene and sight of the early morning and we feel happy so our casement or our window slowly grows that becomes the glimmering square the bright feel square size of the window so the window becomes the beautiful or bright square size 
through which we enjoy the beautiful scene and sight of the outward world in the early morning. So he says that these tears are uh, equal to those sweet memories which we enjoy in the early morning at the time of summer. So sad, so strange the days that are no more. Again he says that these tears are so sad, so strange and uh, as memorable, as sweet as the days that are no more. It means the poet compares the tears as sweet, uh, tears by saying that as sweet as the days of the past which are full of, uh, which were full of happiness and joy. So he wants to say that these tears have generated or these tears have um, got a flow into my eyes due to the memory of the past happy days or the past glorious days which were so happy to me, which were so sweet to me. It means these tears are the result of the uh, 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 memory of the past happiness or the past joys which we enjoyed in the past days. In the last stanza he says that dear as remembered kisses after death and sweet as those by hopeless fancy thent on lips that are for others deep as love, deep as fast love and wild with all regret, O oh, death in life, the days that are no more. So he says that these tears are as dear, as dear means as attractive, as uh, nearest dearest to us, as sweet to us, as the remembered kisses after death. It means after the death of the beloved, the lover remembers the sweet kisses of his beloved, which he has enjoyed in that time. It means these Tears are as nearest, as dearest, as lovable as the sweet kisses of the beloved, which are not available at this time. So the lover remembers the sweet kisses of his beloved of the past days, which were very sweet, which were very uh, happy at this time. So he compares with the sweet kisses of the beloved in the past days and the memory of the past days which have generated the tears into our eyes. As sweet as those by hopeless fancy paint. So these tears are as sweet as we un, in our hope, uh, in our hopelessness or in our disappointed condition or in our frustrated condition we imagine about the false kisses of our beloved or the false kisses of the lips of our beloved because that fall, uh, that kisses or that uh, we can say uh, the kisses of our beloved are not available at this time because the beloved is no more in this world or the beloved has become the beloved or the life partner of the other person. It means the sweet kisses or the sweet kisses of the lips of the beautiful beloved are no more available for the lover at this time. So in the hopelessness, in the disappointed condition, in his failure of love, he imagines falsely about those past sweet and lovable kisses of his beloved. So is the case of these tears. So he wants to say that these tears are the result of the past sweet memories or the past sweet joys which the poet has enjoyed in the past. Or the lips that are for others, he compares the sweetness of these tears with the lips of the beloved because the beloved has become the life partner of others or the beloved has become the beloved of other person. She is not the beloved of the lover at this time and then the lover remembers of the sweet kisses of that beloved. So that sense of sweetness also given by these idle tears to the poet. So he compares these tears with the sweet kisses of the beloved in the past, of the sweet kisses of the lips of the beloved that beloved has become of the other persons or the life partner of the other persons deep as love and he says that these sweet tears or these idle tears are as deep as serious as love deep as fast love they are as deep they are as full of sense and meaning as the fast love because the fast love is very important very significant and always memorable for a person so in this way, the poet says that these tears are as deep or as sweet as the first love and wild with all regret. And these tears are full of excitement, they are wild 
with all regret of the past sweet memories of the past sweet happiness because we have enjoyed or anyone who have enjoyed the sweet days in the past he always remember those sweet days in his future in his time and he always enjoy them with regrets regret so the poet also regret about the past feel regret about the past memories or oh, death in life so the poet says that situation is like death in life the person is alive but he is frustrated he is totally failure he is not enjoy he is not able to enjoy the past sweet days or the past sweet memories again in his life so the condition of that person is like dead in life the person is alive but he is not alive in full sense because he has totally lost in the past sweet memories and still he is alive in this world so the condition and the situation of the lover of the poet is like death in life the days that are no more he says that these idle tears reminds of those days that are no more in this world because those days of the past were full of sweetness those days of the past were full of happiness and joy but those days are no more at this time it means the poet is not able to enjoy happiness at the present moment but he reminds of the past sweet moments and then the tears automatically get flow into his eyes and therefore these tears are termed or called as the idle tears so in this way these tears are termed as the idle tears no doubt they are the tears they have come into the eyes due to a reason due to a we can say cause but the poet is not able to exactly know the cause exactly uh, he is not able to express the significance or the meaning of these tears therefore he calls them idle tears so in this way in the four stanzas of this poem the poet has expressed his feelings the poet has expressed his emotions about these tears which have come into his eyes but he is not able to uh, discern the exact meaning of these tears that what is the exact meaning no doubt there is a meaning no doubt there is the cause of these tears tears but he is not able to uh, discern the real cause of these tears so in this way we can conclude this poem that the poem is a very important song and uh, the poem is melancholic the poem is serious in its nature and tone because the poet expresses Uh, his emotions about the tears expresses his meaning about the tears which are uh, into his eyes but he is not able to know the cause that why these tears have come into his eyes so uh, this is the uh, poem of lord alfred tennyson tears idle tears so students we have discussed today in this poem the cause of the idle tears or cause of the real tears so there is a difference between real tears and idle tears real tears uh, are real because the poet is able to know the meaning of these tears as well as the cause of these tears but idle tears are the tears into our eyes they are pure but we are not able to know the exact meaning of those tears therefore they are called as the idle tears so thanks very much for this Uh, patience patience listening and in the next class we will discuss about the another poem thanks for today